In this video, I am going to show you how to solve a problem on rigid body equilibrium in three dimensions. I am going to solve this problem which you see on your screen. When a rigid body is in equilibrium, two conditions have to be satisfied. The first is the net force acting on the body should be zero and the net moment about an arbitrary point A should also be equal to zero. So these two are vector equations and they are equivalent to six scalar equations, three for the force and three for the moment. So in all there are six scalar equations that we get and therefore we can solve at best six unknowns. So before writing down the equilibrium equations and doing the maths, one should always check that the number of unknowns do not exceed six. So the first step in solving equilibrium problems is to draw free body diagram. Here is the free body diagram of the rectangular plate. I would like you to take note of these two key points. The first is that the FBD should show all the external forces including the correct support reactions. So here you see that there are three reactions at the hinge A and there are only two reaction forces at the hinge B. To figure out the number of reaction forces and couples acting at the hinges, you can always refer your textbook. All the standard textbooks provide a table which lists the different kind of supports and the associated reaction forces and couples. My textbook provides these details about hinge support. There are three forces along x, y and z direction and there are two couples along the radial directions. The book also says that when there is an additional support available to the rigid body then you can ignore these two couples. So here when we consider the reaction for the hinge at A we notice that there is another support at B and therefore we can ignore these two couples and we would be left with just these three forces and therefore I have shown here in the free body diagram the three reaction force components AX, AY and AZ and when it comes to hinge at B we should take note of what has been mentioned in the problem and that is the hinge at B does not exert any axial thrust. So this is the axial thrust which can be ignored as far as hinge B is concerned and therefore we have shown here just the radial components of the reaction BY and BZ. The tension force acting at point E would be acting along EF and weight W is acting downwards at center of the plate. The second point to be taken care of is the selection of the point about which we are going to take moment of different forces and the objective should be to eliminate as many unknowns as possible from the moment equation. If we take moment about point A, the moment equation will not have any moment of these three reaction components because they pass through point A and therefore their moment would be zero and therefore when we compute moment about point A, these three components or these three unknowns would disappear. If we consider point B for computing the moment, then only two force components or two unknowns would get eliminated from our equation. But our objective is to eliminate as many unknowns as possible from our moment equation and therefore we shall proceed with writing the moment equation about point A. So this selection of the point about which you take the moments of different forces for writing the moment equilibrium equation is quite important, right? Having completed the FBD, now let us compute the value of W and write the tension force in vector form. W is mg and the mass of the rectangular plate is given to be 15 kg, so it will turn out to be 147.15 newtons and 
in order to write the force T in vector form, we have to first figure out a unit vector along the line EF that will be lambda EF and that will be equal to the position vector REF upon the magnitude of REF and REF is determined by moving from E to F. So, we go 0 0.08 meters along x direction, 0.2 meters in negative z direction and 0.25 meters along positive y direction. So, we have this as the position vector divided by the magnitude of the position vector which is square root of this square plus this square plus this square and it will work out to 0 0.33. So, our tension force would be the magnitude of T multiplied by the unit vector lambda EF and it will be this vector. Now, we can move on to writing the equilibrium equations. It is always advisable to write first the moment equation and as we decided earlier, we are going to compute moment of all the forces about point A. So, let us first consider the force W and that will be equal to the position vector A P cross with the weight vector which is written here plus the moment due to the tension force. To determine the moment of this force, our position vector would begin from point A and could end up at either point E or F. Let us take the position vector as R A F and R A F crossed with the tension vector that we found out here would be the moment of this force about point A, which is the second term here in this equation. And the moment of these three components, reaction components at A would be 0, so we can ignore them. Now, we compute the moment of these two components of reaction at B and our position vector would be R A B. R A B cross with the reaction at B and the sum of all these moments would be equal to 0. Now, we write these position vectors and R A P would be 0.15 meters along x axis and 0.1 meter along the z direction and therefore, we have 0.15 i plus 0.1 k cross with W. RAF would be the distance from A to the corner of the plate is 0.34. So, we have to go 0.34 meters along x axis and 0.25 meters along the y axis. Therefore, we have this as RAF cross with the tension force and RAB is 0.3 meters. So, 0.3 i cross with the reaction forces at B. So, sum of all these moments would be equal to 0. Okay? We are going to compute the cross product of the position vector and the force vectors by determinant method and therefore, we write the three matrices. In the first row, we have the unit vectors i, j, k. In the second row, we have the position vectors and in the third row, we have the force vectors. So, this would give us the moment of the force W. This determinant would give us the moment of the force T and this determinant would give us the moment of the reaction at B. Right? Now, evaluation of these three determinants is fairly easy and in case you have difficulty in carrying out this evaluation, then I suggest you watch my video whose link I am providing in the description below. What we are going to do is find out the I coefficient from this determinant, add to that the coefficient of Y component from this determinant, add the I component from this determinant and the same exercise we do for J and K coefficients. So, we shall build three equations and we shall be able to find then three unknowns. The first equation is the sum of I coefficients equating them to 0 and 
this equation is equivalent to the equation sigma mx equal to 0 and similarly the sum of j coefficients equal to 0 is equivalent to the equation sigma my equal to 0 and likewise this would be equivalent to saying sigma m z equal to 0. So, in this equation we just have one unknown that is t the magnitude of the tension force and that will work out to 97.1 Newton and when we club all the j components from these three determinants we get this equation in which there are two unknowns b z and t and t we have found out to be 97.1 Newton which we can plug it in here and get the result for the unknown b z which will work out to 66.7 Newton and likewise we club all the k coefficients from which we can determine the unknown b y and that will work out to 9.8 Newtons. So, we have been able to figure out the three unknowns through the moment equation and now the remaining three unknowns we shall be able to get from the equation sigma f equal to 0. So, we have the three scalar equations and by solving these three equations we shall be able to figure out the remaining three unknowns. So, the first equation sigma f x equal to 0 is a x plus the x component of t which is t upon 0 0.33 times 0 0.08 and plugging that value in this equation will give us a x equal to minus 23.54 Newtons. Now, we turn to this equation in y direction and we have three forces a y plus b y plus the y component of t and the y component of t is t upon 0 0.33 times 0 0.25. We plug in the value of t y in this equation. B y we have already found out from the previous slide which is 9.8 Newtons. So, plugging in these values the value of the unknown a y would work out to 63.8 Newtons and likewise from this equation a z plus b z plus the z component of t would give us a z equal to minus 7.84 Newtons. So, our reaction at a turns out to be this vector a x plus a y plus a z and the reaction at b equal to b y plus b z and the tension force is 97.1 Newton. So, this is our answer. So, as you notice the solution to equilibrium problem in three dimension is fairly easy. It is just lengthy and if you take care of the two key points that I mentioned that your free body diagram should be perfect and your selection of the moment center for computing the moment of all the forces should also be correct and it should eliminate maximum number of unknowns. If you follow these two key points then the solution becomes quite easy. I hope you found this tutorial useful and in case you like this please give your like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.